Um, so first off, um, this is, we just wanted to kind of give you guys a look of what a standard, typical uh, tool holder for a CNC router machine looks like. Uh, this is a general purpose tool holder. Uh, the TIR over here, that stands for Total Indicated Runout. So the total indicated runout on these tool holders is typically about 3 tenths. So these are very accurate. This is why what you most commonly see in, uh, you know, on standard CNC routers. Um, this here, where it says HSK and BT, that's just the terminology for different models, different shapes. Uh, for example, the one here on the bottom, that's an HSK style tool holder, or the one on top, uh, that's like your BT style or uh, ISO, it's very similar to an ISO style tool holder. Um, you don't have to worry so much about the different models because most of the time, you know which one you need. So if your machine takes an HSK, you know that's the tool holder you need. Um, the only thing you wanna kinda keep in mind when you're looking at tool holders is there's two different types. There's an, uh, what's known as an A type or an F type. Um, and it, it has to do with the balance specification of the router. So because these are for CNC router machines, which typically spin at higher RPM, you know, 18, 20, 22,000 or so, they have to be specifically balanced to that uh, at that RPM. So anything for a CNC router will be, um, will have an F letter or it's uh, F type. Um, and anything for milling machines, so machines that spin at much lower RPM, maybe eight, you know, six, eight, 10,000 RPM max, um, that will have an A uh, behind the part number somewhere. So F is for CNC routers, where A would be for milling machines. And like, like I said, it just has to do with the balance specification and what RPM the uh, tool holder is being used at. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to collet maintenance, that's probably one thing that gets overlooked the most. Um, you know, we can't stress enough how important it is to maintain the collets, keep them clean. Um, every time you pretty much do a tool change, so if for some reason the tool is worn out, or if you had some issues with breakage or anything like that, every time you break down that tool holder and you take it out of the machine uh, and you're putting in a new tool, uh, that would be the good time to take a look at the collet itself, make sure it's not, uh, doesn't have any burrs, doesn't have any sharp edges, um, make sure it's not rusted or anything like that. Um, and so it's extremely important to try to keep the, uh, here's the collet itself, here's the nut. So basically you wanna try to make sure all the areas of the collet are clean um, same thing when you break down that tool holder out of the machine itself, uh, you sometimes get a little resin buildup on the back of uh, the taper where it actually uh, slips into the spindle. Um, so you wanna try to keep this area clean as well, um, as well as the face of the collet knot itself. Um, we do sell, um, in our accessories catalogs, we have uh, different size brushes to clean out the tool, um, to clean out the collets. Uh, they're just breast brushes, so they're not very abrasive. Uh, you can take a look at them. Um, so that would be f used for cleaning um, collets, and then for cleaning the inside of the spindle. So when you break down that tool holder, you've got that kind of a shape in your spindle. You can use wipers. That's what these things are called. Um, to clean out the inside of the spindle itself. Uh, if you want guys to take a look at these. Um, there's different, uh, we sell different also cleaning solutions uh, listed in the accessories catalog. Um, one is like a, like a cleaner and the, the other one is a rust inhibitor. So it just protects the collets from rusting, protects the tool holders from rusting. Um, but it's like I said, extremely important to try to keep it as clean as possible. Um, that way you'll have a real nice long tool life. I have a question. Yes. Do you spray any material on this? You can, yeah. Those, uh, so is it, would you spray the oil? It's uh, not the oil, it's the cleaner. The cleaner. The cleaner, yeah. I mean, you can still spray, well, you can still spray the oil on afterwards, but most people will just spray it onto a rag and then just okay. uh, coat it because so that way you almost would need to have two separate wipers, one where it's got the cleaner on it and one where it's got the oil. Um, and, that's, and then, and then that's, you're that way. Correct. Yep. So that normally would be used with the actual cleaner itself. So you spray the cleaner onto the wiper, and then you clean inside of that spindle. Um, and then most people will either just take a clean rag, uh, spray some of the uh, 
oil onto the rag and then just wipe, you know, just coat it lightly. Um, so you could spray it onto oil. this too, but then you would have to have two separate wipers. They supposed to have oil on What's that? They're supposed to have oil on Well, it, it, it's not so much oil, it's just extremely lightly to coat it and prevent it from getting resin built up, getting rust or anything like that. Um, and then so as far as the colors, like we talked about, um, here's that rust-free uh, remover, here's the brushes. Um, when you're looking at the collets, you want to make kind of run your finger at the face and on the back side of the collet, make sure there's no burrs um, or where it even looks deformed. You can kind of take a look at all the different slits in a collet and make sure that they're roughly about the same size. Um, you know, if you see a collet being deformed in any way where you can actually visibly see it, uh, then that collet should be replaced. Um, another good way would be to, you can always take a uh, the tool, um, the shank, shank side of the tool, and you can put it from the front and then back to make sure that it slides in easy. So if it goes in easy one way, but it doesn't want to go in the other way, then you know that collet is deformed. It should pretty much go in both ways the same. Um, <clears throat> when you insert a <coughs> tool into the collet, um, the biggest, or the key thing is to make sure that you don't go past the fluted uh, section of the tool. So um, here's an incorrect way, here's a correct way. So typically you'll see where um, people would leave about a, maybe about a sixteenth, maybe about an eighth of an inch um, above that flute washout area uh, or the flute fade out. Um, you want to just make sure that you're grabbing the tool on a cylindrical shank itself, not anywhere of the fluted area. And then, and so here is just an example of how you get um, colored distortion or uh, how they get uh, deformed in a way by not having either the tool enough into the collet. Um, sometimes you can have it too much into the collet. Um, it's at times difficult to fill up. We'd like to see the collet filled up as much as possible when you insert the tool, although that's not always possible because sometimes the shank length is always, you know, is only so long. So it only allows you to put it into the collet that much. Um, there is, um, I'm not sure if I have them here, but in our accessories catalog too, um, there's five different sizes, I believe, what we call life plugs. Life plug is uh, simply almost looks like a little piece of carbide or steel that's been uh, cut and it has a little uh, C-clip into it. And what you do, so if you run into this situation where you can only put uh, the tool so much and all that area is, uh, is empty, there is a collet life plug that goes on the back of the collet and it pretends as if the tool was inserted all the way in. Um, the only thing is, is they're not available in every size that's out there. So they come in your standard kind of a quarter inch, you know, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, three quarter inch uh, diameters. Um, so that's that. And then we'll kind of get into uh, um, all the different types of uh, tool holders. Uh, these are some of your common metalworking tool holders. So we mentioned router uh, tool holders, which typically is like your HSK or your BT or your ISO type. Here you finally see all the different pictures. The CAT, the ISO, and the BT, they're all very similar. I mean, they, they look uh, very close to each other with the exception of HSK. HSK is the only one that looks slightly different. Um, and then there's also a number always associated with that prefix. So you can have an ISO 30, an ISO 40 tool holder, and that just has to do with the overall size of the tool holder itself. Um, once again, I, like I said, you don't really have to pay so much attention to this because if you have a machine, it'll tell you what type you need and you just need to stick to that type. Um, this is the only thing, like I said, I would remember, we mentioned this before, where the A type is always for milling machines, um, which spin at much lower RPM, or the F type is for CNC routers that spin at high RPM and they have a special balance uh, specification. What is the actual there is. I mean, it's, uh, it, it has to do all with uh, the taper itself. So some have a slightly different degree. I mean, they're all slightly different, but the CAT, the ISO, and the BT are very similar visually. So sometimes if you just take a look at it, you won't really know which one is which. 
uh, until you actually look at the stamping that's on the tool holder because they, they look so so much alike. Um, but there are differences in the length of it, um, like these diameters, the tapers, uh, they all have slightly different angles. Um, this guy is what you see a lot of in ISO. So like most CNC routers, uh, HSK, ISO, and sometimes BT. Um, I believe Gary in the back, everything that he has is ISO, like an ISO type. And you can see, you can ask Gary in the lab when you guys go in there um, to take one out and show it to you and just, just so you see what it looks like. Um, you know, but this is the one key thing to remember. A is for milling, F is for routing. Okay, and then so some of the different types, so we'll just kind of go into the different tool holders. So this is the most uh, general purpose in a way uh, when it comes to um, metal metalworking pretty much tool holders. Uh, not very accurate, I mean this is uh, just a general purpose tool holder. The total indicated run out on these is about eight tenths. Uh, they do, uh, they are available in the four different uh, models or tapers. Um, the reason why this one is not as accurate is because the way this, this one works is you insert a tool and the tool normally has to have a flat ground, on, ground onto the shank portion because the, the, then there is a set screw that comes in from the side and you basically tighten it up to hold the tool in place. So because of that setup, because of how it's held, um, it is not the ideal setup in a way, but these are very inexpensive. Um, you know, it's a very low cost solution. Um, the one that you probably see the most, once again, this is that collet holder, which will consist of the tool holder itself. Then you have a collet that slips inside with the knot, and then that's how, how you apply pressure uh, to the shank. Um, there are a lot, they have a lot better concentricity than end mill tool holders. Uh, their total indicated <coughs> runout is only 3 tenths. It is available in the four different models or tapers again, and this is pretty much what you most commonly see in the field. Um, some of the other tool holders, now we're getting into more of a specialty, so there's what's known as a milling chuck, and then there's also going to be a hyd hydraulic, and then there's going to be a shrink fit. So I'll go backwards. Uh, milling chuck, you know, it's, it's a specific design pretty much for, uh, for milling applications. Uh, so when you're working with metals, uh, maybe exotic metals, titanium, in canals, stainless steel, things like this, um, they have a much tighter tolerance too, it's only two tenths. Um, and it is available in the four different models. Once again, it's a little bit lower cost than hydraulic chuck, which is the next one. Uh, so once again, these are all more specialty uh, for, for milling applications. Uh, this is a hydraulic chuck. This is a very, very expensive uh, tool holder. It's extremely uh, accurate. It's only one tenth uh, run out. Um, what's also unique about this is that you have an axial adjustment. So. Inside that tool holder, that this area right here can move up and down, uh, depending how much the tool uh, needs to be inserted. Uh, very expensive. Um, you probably won't see this as much unless it's some high-end shop that's doing maybe, um, you know, aerospace parts, something like that, where they have very, very tight uh, tolerances. And then, lastly, is a shrink fit tool holder. Um, we do have a setup uh, in our lab that Gary can show you, um, probably the most expensive setup. What this is, is you have a, uh, so it's extre extremely accurate also, it's only one tenth. Um, what this is, is it consists of two things. So you'll have your tool holder itself, which does not have any nuts, any collets or anything like that. And then you have a machine. What this does is you put the tool holder in the machine, the machine heats it up to a certain degree, which then make, makes the metals expand slightly then you insert the tool, and then there's a cooling cycle in the machine that cools off the tool holder, and it, the metal will you know, bring back down in size again, and that's how you get a, uh, that's how it clamps onto the tool. Um, it is available in the four different uh, models or tapers, um, but it's a very expensive setup because the machine alone typically, I think runs anywhere between 10 to $20,000, and it's a little time consuming. It's so much quicker to drop the tool holder, put it into a, a, um, you know, a stand, and then break it apart, set the tool gauge, or the gauge height, and then 
uh, run it into the machine. This, this is a little more time consuming, very expensive, um, but extremely accurate once again.